Next up is Peter Urshus, who has a very fun job at the lab imaging atoms in 3D. Please welcome Peter. Thank you. Hi. So today, uh, I'm going to talk to you about imaging atoms in 3D. And a lot of you in school might have been told uh, that the building blocks and materials are atoms. But have you ever actually seen an atom? What I'm going to show you today are some images in two dimensions of, uh, of atoms that we take on our microscope, one of the uh, most powerful electron microscopes up at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And I'm going to tell you how that's not even enough uh, that we have to go to actually image them, imaging them in three dimensions. So let's take a step back and think about the scale of things a little bit. So if you look up into the cosmos, you can really think of how many uh, stars and planets and galaxies are out there. But if you pick up something like a piece of grass or a rock or something from the floor and you look at it really closely, if you look at it really closely, like with an electron microscope or at very high magnification, you can see something equally as wondrous. These materials are made of much smaller building blocks and components. And as we keep going down and down and down to higher in magnification, we get down to the atom. And the atoms are the basic building blocks of materials. And so um, on the right here, we see uh, uh, an image that was formed with a beam of electrons. And this is an image of gold nanoparticles, which looks kind of similar to this image of stars and galaxies and things uh, from out in outer space. Um, so these are actually really important. They're really important building blocks of materials. And the problem is light microscopes are not able to see these kinds of things. Light microscopes use photons to, to magnify objects. And photons are actually pretty big compared to what I look at. So um, electrons are much smaller than photons. And so we can use them to take small pictures of things that are much, much smaller. So although these are very small objects, they're about 5 nanometers in size. They contain about 10,000 atoms a piece. And so at this, even at this magnification, we wouldn't be able to tell what the really building blocks of these materials really is. So um, the manipulation of uh, atoms uh, on the ba very basic scale to create materials that have real world effects is, is called nanotechnology. You might have heard of it. Um, Richard Feynman, a very famous physicist, back in 1959, uh, had a very famous lecture called There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, and he kind of kicked off this whole nanotechnology thing. And one of the most famous quotes in that is, he, it, it goes as follows, it would be very easy to make an analysis of any complicated chemical substance. All one would have to do would be to look at it and see where all the atoms are. So this is a great idea. All you have to do is take a picture of something, look at where the atoms are, and you can figure out what its real world effect is going to be. That's a really great idea. So. The problem was, there was one problem in 1959, and he immediately uh, told us all about that problem. So the only trouble is that the electron microscope is 100 times too poor. I put this out as a challenge. Is there no way to make the electron microscope more powerful? So Richard Feynman gives us this great idea. Just take a picture of it, look at it, and then he gives us a challenge. Look, you got to make these electron microscopes much more powerful in order to do that. So there have been recent advances in uh, focusing electron beams down such that we can now take pictures of, of atoms, of materials. Um, but even, that, e even at this scale, he's not going to be uh, as uh, happy as we might have thought. So here, I'm showing a picture from our very advanced electron microscope. And you can see that um, there, are, there are columns of atoms here. There are these white dots. These are about 5 nanometers across. And um, the thing is, you see different patterns in all of these different nanoparticles. Each one of these structures is made of gold. And they all have pretty much the same arrangement of atoms. The thing is, they're all arranged in different ways, so the viewing angle actually matters a lot. So we can't tell that all of these objects are kind of very, very similar. So in certain points, you can see dots like this here and up in here. So you can see those are columns of 1 to 10 atoms that are projected in two dimensions. These three-dimensional crystals, objects, are being projected onto a two-dimensional detector, basically. Um, so this, Mr. Feynman would not be happy enough with. We can see that we can see atoms, we can see the atomic structure of the materials, but we can't really figure out what the actual full three-dimensional size of the object is. What's really exciting here is you can see these little dots that are here on the on the substrate of the material, where and especially where this red arrow is going. That's one single atom of gold. So there, you've seen an atom. So the problem is basically given by this little cartoon here. Here we have this funny bunny, right? And he's standing in front of a projector. And what you might think, if you were only to be able to look at the detector, look at the screen, you might think that what's in between the source and the detector is actually a hand. But it's actually this bunny. 
So if you were able to maybe look at this from a few different orientations, you might be able to figure out, wait, something's funny is going on here. So I want everyone right now to try an experiment with me. And so I want everyone to close one eye and then hold your fingers up in front of your face, kind of close like this. And now try to touch your two fingers together. It's kind of hard, right? All right, now open both eyes and now try to do it again. It's much easier, and if it's not, then you should go see a doctor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we've got here is your brain, you have two eyes, so you have two views. So you get kind of a three-dimensional image of everything that you're looking at right now. So that's nice. But in the microscope, we have things that are much more complicated than simply trying to put two fingers together. We have atomic arrangements of 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 atoms. So what we need to do is we actually need to take about 70 images of our object, or more than that, at many different orientations. And this is probably one of the most uh, highest resolution three-dimensional images you can get. And this is actually platinum atoms in a three-dimensional three nanocrystal. That's about five nanometers across, something like that. And you can see, as we spin it around, that the object actually, the, all the columns of atoms will line up briefly, and you'll see that, that atomic structure. But as we keep going around, you can see all kinds of defects, and, pro and uh, uh, different regions in the material where the, the atomic arrangement looks very, very different. And that's because there are defects in the material and different types of crystals that are all put together. And a lot of crystals actually look like this. Um, and those defects are what we really want to be able to image because it's not just that it's a perfect crystal, it's that it's an imperfect crystal. And those imperfections in the crystal are what give it a lot of its, uh, its properties. And so by imaging objects in three dimensions, not only two dimensions, and at atomic resolution, we can really figure out how these objects are put together, and then we can start building better materials using these, uh, using these materials. Thank you.